Hello friends, today I am going to talk about something which has a great social and medical values, that is eye donation. Looking into an aspect of a doctor, what does he see? You look into a, a category of people with ailments coming to him for a treatment. That is what brought me into a field of medicine. If you look into my journey of medicine, which dates back to almost three and a half years, three, uh, 30, 30 years plus, coming from a background of uh, uh, hilly terrains of Uttarakhand, Himalayans, and getting into a Delhi for a medical education was a big thing. Once I have entered the medical education, I thought the passion is accomplished because I have got into medical field, and that's the end of story. It's not true. In medical field, once you cross one step, there is another step, and another, another step which is much harder, much difficult to uh, attain a success in those fields. During my MBBS education, which you all know it is for a very, very long time, almost five years, when I was going through the, my internship and posted in a department of eye, where I banked into a patient who just was going across the corridor, and I told him, can't you see? A poor fellow, he replied back to me, yes, sir, I can't see. That's why I banked onto you. And going through the department of uh, ophthalmic scenario in that uh, particular hospital, I saw patients blind going around the corridors with the help of people. And I thought at that time, what would be their life if they remained blind throughout, your li throughout their life? People sitting here, if you close your eyes for 10 seconds, then you realize the darkness in your life. And what is that going to really cure these people? That is what pushed me into a department where I thought I would be doing something. As a young physician, you always have a thinking that you will be a great surgeon. I wanted to wear a mask and have a knife in my hand and do a general surgery and operate people with various ailments. But when I thought about eyes, which has a micro organ in the body, and it has a huge role to play for somebody's life, and doing curative surgery for those people were great. Looking to scenario of blindness world over, we all know cataract is one of the most important cause of blindness. Fortunately, today we have a corrective measures, a surgery, and we implant an artificial lens inside the eye which can give you a vision which is as good as a young person. It changes the life of a person. It has a glamour attached to that. And I did pursue that cataract surgery as my passion. I did thousands and thousands of surgery across the country. In fact, I've been invited to do a life surgeries in various parts of the world also. And fortunate to have uh, blessings from His Holiness Dalai Lama when he had visited my center for his surgeries. In fact, that was a glamour. I thought that's the end of the world as far as eye disease is concerned. But it pushed me to another category of blindness, which is called corneal blindness. What is cornea? If you look into cornea, it's an anterior part of the eye, which is like a lens, a camera lens, which focuses the light onto the retina, and then you can see. Imagine what will happen to this lens if it, it gets opaque or blocked in the center. The, no light can go inside the eye, and you can't see. The various disorders, diseases, which can opacify or disease this cornea can be enumerated in various uh, lines. If you look into an entire scenario of corneal blindness in the world and India, one of the four most important causes of blindness which affecting cornea is infections. The infections can be because of bacteria, it can be because of fungus, it can be because of viruses. The other common cause of uh, corneal blindness would be injuries especially young patients, patients who are working in their uh, fields in India. The, one of the commonest reasons of eye injury is festival related. You'll be surprised, we have so many festivals in India, like Dipavali, Dasera, cracker injuries, bone air injuries, schools, the children get injured because of playing, are the second most important cause of corneal blindness in our country. A third thing which is typically related to India and Southeast Asia country, is lime. People used lime for uh, eating uh, betel nuts 
And this caused a uh, chemical injury to the eye, which is typically related to our country, and it really caused blindness in young children. The other thing which also typically attached to the developing country is nutritional blindness. Acute deficiency of vitamin A, malnutrition, can cause blindness. Apart from that, atrogenic causes, which can cause a blindness because of corneal involvement, is surgeries. Any intraocular surgery, like cataract surgery, other surgery, glaucoma surgery, can cause damage to the cornea. Similarly, other ways of uh, treating yourself. People take off-the-counter medications. People use homemade traditional medications that can cause damage to the cornea. So these are a wide range of scenarios which can affect the cornea and cause blindness. And the opacity right in the center, as I said in the beginning, can really block your vision. What should we do for these patients? The only way of taking this central blocked part of the cornea, which is a window of the eye, is transplantation. The word transplantation is, as far as eye is concerned, is a corneal grafting. And grafting, you all know, is done after somebody donates the donor tissue. So looking into this particular picture, you can see the window can be changed. And as I said, if I just show you a video of one of my patients who had come for a corneal surgery, you can see he is walking in the corridor with the help of a person. This is a plight of a patient who is blind. And once he is admitted, the surgery can be done if somebody donates the eyes. And this eye is not an entire eye. It is just the clear part of the eye that is cornea. You can see this is the picture, bilaterally similar picture in both eyes. He was visually handicapped, could not walk around. And after surgery, this is the first day of surgery. You can see he could walk the stairs independently without a support and reach up to my office and thank me for the surgery. This is what us a change, not for a patient, not for a doctor, for entire family and society and for a country. You can imagine somebody blind, not working for himself, for family. It is a, a dependency, a loss for our entire family. Just looking back to the magnitude of corneal blindness, I talked about the various causes. What is the magnitude of blindness across the world? World Health Organization came out with a report in 2013. The corneal related diseases are causing blindness is almost 14% of total blindness, which is almost 50 million people are blind because of cornea or corneal related disorders. What about India? If I see our uh, reports from our National Control of Blindness, Ministry of Health of in Government in India, the almost 5.2 lakh people are waiting for our corneal transplant surgeries. And out of that, 50% of them are bilaterally blind. That means they can't see anything. And these are the patients awaiting surgeries. And unfortunately, because of uh, a poor collection of corneas, people not donating, many people go untreated, which is so unfortunate in today's days of uh, medical practice. Last year, that is 2014, in India, entire India, we could only generate 47,000 surgeries. That means there's a huge backlog of patients awaiting surgery. And in addition, we are adding more than 20, 25,000 new patients into this list. By this rate, in the next five years, we'll be doubling our uh, patient with corneal blindness awaiting corneal transplant surgery. So what should we be doing and what we have done to improve this uh, entire scenario? There are two ways to look into. One is to improve your surgical skills. Innovate surgical techniques and improve the uh, eye donations. Let me take through our journey how we improve our surgical techniques. As I said in the beginning, if you look into surgical aspects of corneal surgery and entire cornea, you thought about one single lens, but cornea has a multiple layers. It can have an anterior layer, it can have a middle layer, it can have a posterior layer. And each layer can get separately defective or diseased. This surgery of corneal grafting is one of the most successful surgery in the body in terms of transplantation. Because of two reasons. One, it is a small organ, which is free of vascularization. Anything which is transplanted to the body from some other part of uh, other person's body has a one limitation of rejection, 
which is minimum with this corneal graft surgery. That's why it's been successful for hundreds of years. But in recent years, the thinking of uh, changing the entire cornea for a corneal disease has changed. We have thought about customization, which is a, uh, a fashion of the day, customizing the things for a particular requirement. Same thing holds true for a cornea also. The disease of uh, eye can be categorized into various layers. Similarly, a donated eye can be customized to the similar size and shape by splitting the cornea into multiple layers. If you see this uh, diagrammatic representation, this is the cornea which you see can be split into a various uh, thickness by various uh, automated systems and lasers. And this is what uh, you see in this particular video. You can see this uh, uh, corneal tissue which has been put onto the artificial chamber to maintain the pressure which is normally there in the eye so that it can be split into a various uh, thickness and shapes by automated system. You can see uh, this is a blade which is run automatically in a speed of 30,000 cuts per second, which gives a very smooth cut up to the desired depth, which can range from the 100 microns to 450 microns, which will give you two cuts. One is the anterior part of the cornea, that is, we call it the anterior cap, which will be used for a disease where only the anterior part of the cornea is involved in the patient. This is the posterior part of that same split tissue, which will be used for posteriorly for a patient who has a posterior corneal uh, disease. Therefore, one cornea we have split to two, a remaining part of the uh, peripheral cornea can also be used for other disorders which we call a stem cell deficiency. So therefore, we have improved the uh, utilization of one single tissue. The advantage of splitting the cornea into multiple shapes, as I said, is a customization. Second, we are using the only a uh, limited part of the corneal uh, transplantation, uh, retaining the patient's healthy part of the cornea and that gives a better success in our patients. In fact, it is wonderful to think this tissue which we have taken from the donor can be attached with our sutures. If you see this diagram in the lower side, there's no sutures. Uh, it's uh, one of the new technologies, no suture surgeries for a corneal transplantation. No sutures, there's no maintenance for sutures, and the complications related to sutures is also less, and rejections are also less. So we have gained few things. One. We have used one tissue for multiple patients. Therefore, increasing our uh, number of uh, utilization almost by 20%. So if we imagine 100 patients could get transplantation, now we have 120 patients getting with the same number. Second, we have improved the results, decreasing the uh, antigenic load because we imp uh, implanted or uh, transplanted a small amount of tissue, less rejection, more better results, and towards the end, patients are having an early rehabilitation, they can go to work faster. The second important thing is we could do a multiple surgery in a short time. This was one of the uh, stories which covered by Times of India. We could do a surgery in one day, 22 surgery because of this technology and better orientation of surgeries. The other aspects of improving surgery was to train people. And we have looked into those directions. And throughout the country, we have improved the wet lab sessions skill transfer uh, techniques, and applying a technology called uh, lasers to cut tissues and to uh, implant and transplant these uh, cases. This is a part of surgery and surgeons. Second part is more difficult, that is how to improve the donations. And what are the things which can uh, uh, be improved? I said in last year we did 47,000 surgeries in the entire country. but there were only 50% utilization. That means 50% of the tissue could not be utilized for surgeries. There could be a various reason for that. One, the donation which you got may be from a patient who had an infective disorder. A patient uh, had a, a delay in uh, donation. That means we presume that if donations are not done within the first six hours, the coronal tissue is not that viable for a transplantation. Third thing, the integration of various eye banks transplant centers, surgeons are not equipped or well done in this country, therefore these could not be given to the right patient at the right time. So we looked into two aspects of a corneal transplant surgeries. That is, one is how to improve the donation. There are two ways people donate. One is a voluntary donation. After death, people come forward and they ask you uh, for the donations. Second approach we have taken for the last four or five years in this country is to approach hospital-based 
that we call it corneal uh, retrieval program, which is based on a hospital. There, we put counselors in the various hospitals. If you look into Delhi, we have integrated all the big hospitals in Delhi. And in fact, with this hospital uh, uh, attachment of counselors and uh, motivating people, we have improved our, our hospital retrieval by 200 percent. So that has been a success story for us by improving the more donations directly from the hospitals. If I look into the deaths happening in Delhi city on various big hospitals, if you even get a 50 percent of donations, we can take care of the entire country's need. So therefore, I think we need to motivate ourselves to re really look into this aspect. The third important thing in this category would be in a general masses, in society, there are various myths attached to coronal donation. The first thing is, people say, what will happen to my uh, uh, beloved when he is reborn? Would he be born blind? Would he, he be disfigured subsequently? Nobody knows that, what is rebirth. But if I say, today if you donate your uh, kin's two eyes, four people can see. And nothing better than making your eyes see after your death. I think that is the important message I want to spread from this platform. People can make other people see, and that's the best thing possible. Second important thing, the myth is the religion. Our religion doesn't provide uh, a solution in terms of organ donation of, uh, or coronal donations. But as far as my knowledge goes, there's no religion which can prevent uh, organ donations. There are religions where they donate everything. And they are the ones who are supplying cornea organs to various parts of the country and the world. The third thing which is I want to clarify here, a corneal donation or eye donation, there is no financial attachment in this. This is free of cost and it is a social cause which we should understand. The work is huge in terms of uh, getting people out of corneal blindness. We have put a lot of efforts to improve our results by improving technologies, by splitting the cornea so that many people can get uh, a facility of transplantation and improving the our sector of eye donation, working with government, non-government organizations to improve uh, PLES. In fact, we received thousands of PLES for an uh, uh, entire year. And uh, unfortunately, this PLES doesn't translate into the donations. We have seen our results. Only 5% uh, translations are there from the PLES to a donation. Therefore, we require a, a definitive law which can change this scenario. Towards the end, I'll say the work should be done. I just read the words of Robert Frost who says, if you look into his words, the trees are there which are, if you look into darkness, they are very dark and deep. But if you look into uh, uh, your future, I would say there are a lot of promises to keep and I have to uh, work and walk and walk for a long and long time. And if just conclude with the, my line which I say, it's not me, it's not you, it is we together we can make it this coronal transplant as success. Thank you.